So the Aklimo API is is a JSON REST API that that provides recommendations over the web. So the API is basically sitting in the middle of the user interface, and there are recommendation scripts that make it as token as spoken about. And this is what relates the data from the user to the scripts and back. So it takes the user input, sends it to the script for processing, then takes the script output and gives it back to the user. So the link there is where it's currently hosted, and it's the link to the documentation, and it's currently being updated. So you can refer to it at a uh, letter. Is there a presentation here? Oh, all right, all right. Sorry, because it wasn't moving. Thanks so much. Oh, okay. So the API currently, it's in three parts, but two parts are what have been completed. And the third one is still undergoing some clarification on the script side. So we have the basic API and the advanced API. So to access this API, it, you will need to have an, an authorization to use the resource. So what one does is to create an account and then they will be able to generate an API key. So this API key is what will be used for every request in the API. So without the key, you won't be able to access the resource as it contains some sensitive information, so, such as user phone numbers and email address, and also the geographical location. So the API will be used to track and also view the, the frequency of use for each particular user, partner, and also the device. So I'll talk about the basic API. So as the name suggests, it's quite basic in the sense that it collects very minimal data from the user. So this is best suited for cases where the user interface is a simple one, like a chatbot, uses the application, text-based application. This is where you need to connect very little user information and also the feedback needs to be quick. So that's where the basic API comes in. So most of the information will be default, and I will show you what is is being collected from the user. So the next one is a typical request for uh, for the basic API. So the section in orange is the URL when the API is, is hosted. So api.aklimo.org. So once it goes live, that's where it will be accessed. Then we have the key. The key is the API key that is generated from the account of the user who signed up for the API. Then the other information is what is collected from the user. So we have the country, we have the area, area of their land, we have the current field yield. So it's a predefined set of values. This will be available in the documentation. Then we have the planting month. This is the month that the user say that they planted. So from the planting month, we add 12 months to get the, the month of harvest. Then this is what is used to compute the recommendations. Then we have the geographical coordinates, latitude and longitude. This is used to determine the farm area and also determine if that area has recommendation from a kilimo. Then we have the maximum investment. This is the amount the farmer is willing to invest in their land. This is used to display if the recommendation will be profitable or not and provide the necessary suggestion. Then we have the cassava unit price. This is the unit at which they sell the cassava. So in this case, the, the unit is fixed at, at a ton. The unit is at tons. So the cassava unit price is the price for, for, for every ton, for the tonnage of the roots based on the output that they get. Then we have the list of fertilizers available. Currently, we have three three lists of default fertilizers for the basic API, where you define if, if you have it available, then you also define the price of the fertilizer. So behind the scenes, the, the fertilizer weight is computed using the 50 kg bag. So that's set value for the basic API. So basically, these are the parameters that are gathered from the user side and relayed into to the API. So in the next screen, I'll show you what a typical response looks like. So I've minimized some sections since they are not necessary in, the, in this presentation. So after the, the data has been collected and sent to the script and computed, the, this is what a typical response will come back. So the user phone, phone number, name, and email, they have default values as it's, it, 
currently the API is still serving the mobile application and we cannot just remove the fields as it, as it will cost a, it will cost a breaking change. So based on the recommendation type, in this case we have the fertilizer recommendation. The FR is what will come back to the user. That text is what they will see on their interface. So the recommendation will be based on what they provided. So based on the input, it can be profitable, not profitable, or the coordinate might be outside the area where a claim was serves. So that's that's it for the basic API. The final one, I'll show you the fields that have the default value set that are not picked from the user. So in this case, we have the harvest month as I have spoken. So it, it is computed by adding 12 months to the planting month provided. Then we have the area unit. Since we do not collect the area unit currently, all recommendations are computed based on the on the hectare. So whenever the developer developing partner will use it, they can cross convert it back to their preferred unit size. So I'm using hectares and default. Then the weight, this is the weight for the fertilizer bags. They are currently set to 50 kilogram bags. The, those are the ones that are used, are used to provide the recommendation. Then we have the risk attitude of the farmer. The risk at attitude means their willingness to invest in technology and modern farm practices. So the default is zero, indicating that the farmer is not willing to take a risk. So it's it's scaled between zero to, I think, three or four. Not very sure at the moment, but I'll confirm. Then we have the cassava unit weight. The unit weight is in tons. So this is what is used to com compute the profitability and also give the yield based on the values provided by the user. So that's that's it for the basic API. And if there are, are there any questions before I proceed to the advanced one? Okay. So, the, so, so, so uh, just a quick question. So these are real time um, calls, right? That you're expecting. Um, yes. That your system will be expecting these um, when the time for the recommendation is required. Do you have a set of APIs that um, then pre-populate the database with some of the information that you already need, like their location, their practices, and all that kind of stuff? Yes, we do have a set of pre-populated values. After this, I'll show you a sample demonstration of how the call the call is like. So I'll show you the real-time call and not so able to get the result. All right. I mean, what I meant is the assumption right now is that there's an there's an app, right, that's in the hands of the extension officer that's providing information yeah. that is then used by the engine to provide the recommendation. Um, yes. Just um, once you get the smaller set of data coming through the API. I'm I'm asking, is there a possibility of them populating the database with that other data that's almost, you almost it's, it's not calibration data because it's almost, uh, uh, you know, you are showing us a very good, um, uh, uh, what's it called, picture of uh, an activity that had been done. Uh, yeah. You know, that kind of that says this activity is behind. That assumes you've got a farm diary. I'm sort of going back to that uh, whole uh, schema that you have this around um, ODK. Yeah. I'm asking, rather than connecting directly to ODK, um, are we able to populate that information via APIs? Yes, the, the API is... has. All right, yeah. go ahead. Okay, the API has other endpoints that allow collection and updating of data, like the cassava prices, the cassava available for each country, the market prices, and so on. So this can be updated in real time based on our on our partner feedback and also experts in the field. So this data is currently stored in the database, and during recommendations, it can be used for computation. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that, I think that's the that's the answer I was looking for because then that means that even for some data yeah. that you might not have been receiving APIs, you can still build APIs to then receive that data. Yes. Yeah. 100%. Cool. Okay. So, uh, any any other person with a question or clarification required? Okay. So, I'll talk about the advanced API. So, the advanced API is, I can say it's the more it's the one that is currently used by our Kilimo app. It collects a lot of the data from the user. 
So the user, the user is in charge of providing this information. So it can be used for mobile application, web application, desktop application, or any interface that has the ability to connect a lot of user data in a friendly manner. So I'll I'll just dive straight into the into the sample. So for the advanced API, this is a typical request. So the user info section has been collapsed, but it collects the username, farm name, their phone number, and email address. As this advice can also be, be relayed through the through their email as an attachment, and also it can come as a text message to their provided phone number. This usually happens in the case that since the data provided is a lot, the computation can take a bit of time. So it can it can be queued for background processing if we have a lot of requests. Then once it's completed, the user will receive a notification through the SMS and email address, but they have to indicate if they want to receive to receive that recommendation through those two channels. So depending on the type of request for fertilizer recommendation, the, the, the number of input collected varies. If it's intercropping, it will vary. Schedule planting, it will vary based on the context. But as you can see from here, we connect with the country, latitude, longitude, area, area units. Then here we collect the planting date and also the harvest date. So this is provided by the user. They, they then have the liberty to change their area units. Currently, we compute acre, hectares. We used to do meter squared, but we dropped it at the moment, as some of the recommendations were not giving accurate output. Then they provide the cassava unit price. Then here we have the list of fertilizers. So this list can change according to the number of fertilizers they have available. So the, the APA currently requires a minimum of two fertilizers to be able to provide accurate recommendations, but the user can provide up to six or as many as is available in their country and also what is currently available, available in the market and accessible to them. So the request is similar to the one for basic, but in this case, only the API key is provided in the URL. The rest is sent as a JSON, JSON data since it's, it can be quite long and don't fit in the URL appropriately. So next I'll show you the response. So the, the response for all requests is standardized. It will be similar for all. So based on the kind of request that has been done, it can be FR, IC, or SP. So that field will be populated accordingly with the recommendation. And in this case for the advanced API, if a request was indicated to receive an SMS or email. This same information will be sent back to them. Then the email will be a bit more advanced. It, it will be similar to the paper-based tools, where it has imagery, the satellite map of the farm, and also visual representation of the profit and the yield as, as per the text. I don't have that example here, but I can I can provide it via email to interested parties and also to be included in the documentation for reference. So basically that, that's, that marks the end of this presentation for the APIs. What I'll do next, I'll show you how a typical request looks like. It doesn't have an interface as the interface can be developed by the partner as per their requirements and also their, their needs. So they're at liberty to define how they want to collect this data. The important bit is to comply with the with the request structure here so that the data can be validated accordingly and they can get recommendations. Yes. So let me just switch to, to another screen to show you how the how a typical request looks like. OK, so this. This is a typical request of what of how the request can be done. So we assume this is coming from the basic API. If you send it, you get the recommendations. So I made three, three instances. So the computation takes a bit of time as this is real-time data. It's not predefined anywhere, so it has to be computed and the best out outcome is what is presented to the user. 
So the advanced decks are about a minute to compute. We should be a bit faster. So as you can see, this is the output that we have here. So this is for fertilizer recommendation. So the FREA contains data. I, I now make it can make sense of this on my end. I won't be able to explain properly. But this will show you the fertilizer rates and it's also ranked according to profitability. Then based on the recommendation, you can see what is recommended is the fertilizers with the highest rates. So this means this kind of this kind of input will yield a positive result and it will be profitable for the user. So the last section is what is related to the user. This is also what is processed by the API to the end user. The rest of the data is stored in the database for for analysis and also to view the trend of the inputs from certain countries, users, and also to determine the most frequent use cases, and also to see which which values of inputs are incorrect and result in a lot of invalid recommendation. That way you can be able to tune and also update the prices and also the fertilizer availability based on feedback and updated data. So the, the next one is a typical request, but it will not be profitable as this usually happens if the if, if what the farmer is currently doing yields the maximum output available on the farm. So the recommend, recommendation will suggest fertilizer application will not increase the yield, so they don't need to apply fertilizer to their farm as it will not result in a positive output, they'll just be wasting money. So the next is a, is a post request. This is also the basic recommendation. This can this is this this was added to cater for applications which cannot send data via URL, maybe due to security reason or design issues. So this can be used by the developer in, instead of the, the get request. So for every request, it has to be accompanied by the API key in the in the URL in this case. So yeah. So when the when, a, when an application is designed, it will interface with the API, and this when it sends data, this is how it will be sending it. Then next we have the Pro API. As you can see, we have several. We have the fertilizer recommendation, best planting practices, intercropping, and also scheduling planting. So I'll, I'll just make a note as this API, it's a revision of the original API we had from last year. We decided to split it into specific use cases since we will be sharing it with our partner. We, we wanted we wanted it to be much easier to understand and also implement and also to reduce technical complexity for the intended technical users who will be developing the API. So for this one, the yield will be the same, but it, it will vary based on this data that is provided. Here we have the user information I've spoken about. We have the country code, mobile number, full phone number. Device token is what is used to identify the device requesting the recommendation. This is automatically generated. So to see this API in action, you can download the Aklimo app. You'll be able to see all the interfaces that collect this information for all the various use cases. They vary according to the use cases. So FR is what collects the most data followed by the scheduled planting and best practices is what collects the least data as this just recommends weeding and which kind of farming implements to use on the farm. Basically that's the Aklimo API in a nutshell. Thank you.